Baristas, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Karen and I am your host. As you can see, my beautiful gecko here, I need to find a better place. It's kind of just propped up and I don't know that it is secure there. If there's an earthquake, it most certainly is coming down. Uh, it will fall down. Uh, but I put it up so you guys could see it in the background. I want to just do a quick review of the Missoni Accomplished by Espace Tricot. Love, love, love the pattern. I know um, I've seen, I've been following some of you on Instagram and you're making the, you've made, you make, you probably have already finished the sweater. And it's a great, super easy and free pattern. You know, Espace Tricot ladies, um, Lisa and Melissa, you might want to think about at least charging one or two dollars, right? I mean, you guys put a lot of work into this, and I understand why you don't, but gosh, you should really get a little bit of compensation for the work you guys do. But that said, we are all very grateful for the free patterns because they are fabulous and just clever and beautiful and so we do appreciate it. Um, so the pattern is super easy to follow. On my garment I actually used, I think it calls for a sport weight kind of a fuzzy yarn or maybe a natural more rustic yarn. I used a lace weight juniper moon lace weight held together with oh gosh a mohair and I forget if it's Rowan I will have all the details on my Ravelry projects page. And so I held those together throughout. And then for the color work, I held a hedgehog mohair together with another Juniper Moon lace weight uh, pink in a very hot pink. I forget what they call it, but it's like a hot pink. Anyway, the details will be on my Ravelry channel. I love the pattern. Uh, my only comment, and it's not against the pattern, it's against tools that we use. I am not a fan of magic loop knitting. I somehow always get confused between which needle, which needle do I pull out, and then I've got that long, you know, the, the cord to deal with, and sometimes some of the cords aren't as flexible as others. And when I set it down, I also have heard from some people that ladders are more common in Magic Loop. I don't know because I've only tried it a few times years ago. I prefer DPNs for my sleeves. So I use DPNs and I know that many knitters have said they also have, or they have, just like Magic Loop, they have issues with ladders. I do not have that experience unless I'm completely blind and don't see my work too well, which is, which is possible. Although that's why we wear our readers. Reading glasses. Hey, you guys, do you notice my new hip, hipster glasses? Oh my God. I got two new pair from the optometrist. And did I need to? No, but I just, I fell in love with two different uh, frames and I had to have them. Anyway, so um, doing the sleeves, because I use DPNs, I have to say color work was a little bit of a pain. Thank goodness this is an easy color work. The This um, zigzag, right, the zigzag is an easy pattern. So that helped a lot, but it was sort of a pain for me using DPNs. And once I got into it, I guess it was okay. But when I first started, like on the first sleeve and the first band of color, I thought, oh my gosh, this is such a pain in the butt. But then by the time I got to the second band of color, it all seemed fine. I mean, it's a little slower. I would be curious to try. I, I see that there are 12 inch circulars available. So if you're doing a wider sleeve, like this one, right? It's not fitted. It's a little wider. The pattern is super great, super easy, highly recommended. I am making another one. I have been asked how I work in my pearl stitch for the faux seam, which I always include on my knit in the round garments, whether they're knit from the bottom up or knit from the top down, I always include that faux seam. And to me, I think, I'm gonna stand up on my stool a little bit. 
I think it just gives the garment a little more structure. And maybe, I, maybe I'll have to record a little bit more and insert some photos here, so I will probably do that. Um, but I feel it gives the garment more structure. So I always include it. I've been doing that for years. Well, years. I've only been knitting in the round garments for two or three years. So since that time, I've always knit in the flat in pieces before, prior to a couple years ago. So now that I knit in the round, I don't like that tube looking mm, structure. And so I always put in that faux seam, which is a purl stitch. So I'm going to insert some footage of how I do that and I hope it helps. I hope you guys can see it. I, uh, I don't have a camera that will hover over my hands and work, so I may do with my, I may do with what I have, my tripod and angling the camera. So I hope that what I'm going to insert is readable, let's say visually readable. Uh, so I hope that helps you guys out. Look, I still have my Christmas jammies on. Today is Thursday, the day after Christmas. Um, okay, I have been asked how I add the faux pearl seam to top-down sweaters. And I am making another Missoni Accomplished, except I'm not doing the color work on this one, uh, or at least not in the yoke. I might put it in later on the sleeves. It's my second Missoni Accomplished. <clears throat> excuse me and so now I've separated for the sleeves so I have put the sleeves on this holder and the pattern tells me to cast on X number of stitches and I am not following the pattern exactly I've made a few stitch count modifications um, so I'm not going to cast on the same number of stitches the pattern calls for so if you have this pattern and you're following it I think it tells you for one of the sizes to cast on 12 stitches or something like that. So I am just going to do it slightly differently, but this will give you an idea of my pearl faux seam. So <clears throat> this is still part of the back. So here's my, and, and that I've changed too on this particular pattern. The sleeve would start, you're moving the beginning of round and your sleeve is coming here. But I want this as my center back. This was my where I cast on my first and right, my first and last stitch. So I'm modify I'm just moving stitches so that I can have the, uh, the center back will be my um, where I cast on and cast off. So that's my beginning and end of round. <coughs> Excuse me, instead of doing it by the sleeve. So I've got, for my back, I have, I think it's like 86 stitches or something. So I'm doing, you know, I knit 43 stitches, I put my sleeves on a holder, and now I'm going to cast on a few stitches for the underarm. So usually your pattern will tell you, cast on so many stitches, whatever that is. And I think in this pattern it says 12, but because I've made some stitch count modifications, I'm going to do three. I'm adding three stitches on this side for the back. I usually, once I split for the uh, sleeves front and back, <clears throat> I will increase the number of stitches on the front by two usually, just so the front is slightly wider than the back. And I do that for the, I do that because I want the back to hang slightly longer than the front of the garment, which on some of these knit in the round patterns, I notice that there is an issue where the back rides up. So if I include two extra stitches on the front portion of the garment, then that helps decrease the appearance of that rising of the back. And then I will also do short rows on the back portion of the knit in the round sweater I'll just do two short rows or maybe four four you know uh, two or three short rows just to drop that back hem slightly and so when I'm finished it will either be even with the front or just a tad longer so that it doesn't ride up because for me it really makes me insane when 
when the garment, a sweater, rides up in the back. Okay, so I've cast on three stitches, which are for my my um, the back of the garment. Then I will back loop, cast on, oh, sorry, sorry, no, wait, hold on. I will place a marker. Then I'm gonna cast on a stitch, and I'm gonna place another marker. That will become my purl stitch. So that's gonna become my faux purl seam for the rest of the garment. Now I will finish casting on, and I want four stitches for the front. So one, two, three, four. And then you continue. Okay, let me see if I can show you this very close up. So here are the regular stitches for the back. I've added three. Place a marker. There's going to be my pearl faux stitch, a marker, and then I've cast on another four. So you guys can do it the way you want. Whatever the pattern calls for to cast on as you're doing your sleeve separation, just add one extra stitch between those stitches that you're adding on between the back and the front, and that will become your, po your pearl faux seam stitch. So you can see here, now that I've knit quite a few rows, there is my pearl. That's not focus. There. There is my pearl faux seam. Here's my sleeve opening, right? So I'm working, I am working down the body, right, towards the hem. But there is the pearl faux seam. Okay, so the garment that you saw me working on is a work in progress. It is another it is another Missoni accomplished. I am not work, doing the color work. I think I'm going to do a band of color work towards the bottom closer to the hem and then maybe a band of color work close to the cuffs. I haven't decided yet. I'm trying to figure that out. Um, so, so far I have this. Yesterday, I divided for the sleeves and I knit all of this. So this is probably five, five or six inches. So I've knit five or six inches of the body. And I've tried it on. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is so great having those 47 inch needles. And I think they're even longer ones because it, I do notice that I've lost a few stitches as I pull it over my head. So maybe I'll have to even get longer uh, circulars for trying on. Um, but yeah, it seems to fit nicely. I this one I'm using a fingering weight yarn, which is I think uh, it's I think it's Charlemont by Valley Yarns. So it's a very very affordable yarn, and comes in great yardage. And I love my teals, and so I'm holding it together with a Rowan uh, Kid Silk mohair. And so this is probably closer to the sport weight that I think the pattern calls for. So I, um, and I'm a loose knitter, so I, I cast on, I cast on the same number of stitches the pattern calls for, for the smallest size. But then for the increases, I didn't do them. I didn't do as many increases. I also, which this pattern, if memory serves, this pattern does not have short row shaping around the neck. I included some short row shaping. And as I mentioned in the video, I did, once I bound off, and I, mean, I know I'm repeating myself, but I wanna do this because I recorded the other video yesterday, and since I'm doing this today and I've made a lot of headway, because I don't like when when you raise your arms with yoke sweaters they tend to pull up the body of the sweater right when you raise your arms so because this the the uh, sort of the the armhole opening in some of the sweaters is very deep and so I think when you raise your arms the body comes up for me personally I do not like that look so I'm experimenting and I don't know if it will work, which I mentioned on the uh, other video that I inserted. 
I, I'm playing with putting in short rows right after you separate for the sleeves. So I put in some short rows and now I'm second guessing whether that's really going to do the job of giving me a little more fabric under the arms in the hopes that the body, it won't be so... I, I think it's the connection between the sleeves where you separate for the sleeves and then come back and work the sleeves. I feel like there isn't enough give in the underarm area and so I'm trying to find a way to correct for that and if anyone else has another idea of something they have done to correct for that I would love to hear it so I'm trying my short rows and I won't know as I mentioned earlier I won't know if it's going to work until I actually sew the garment to you know finish the sleeves and you know sew up all the ends weave in the ends and and do all of that so I won't know if that's going to work or not. But I didn't do so many short rows that if it doesn't do what I'm hoping it will do, that it will not adversely affect the fit of the garment because there's only, you know, two short rows. Like, how would you call it? If you, you go across, and actually I'm doing German short rows, so you go across however many stitches you want to, in your first German short row, then you turn and purl back because you have to work right. I separated, so I purl back, you know, X stitches, not many, and then I German short row again. To me, that's really one set of German short rows, so I did two sets of German short rows, right? So I, I went down, wrap and turn, come back on the purl side, wrap and turn, come back to my beginning of round, go again, you know, just beyond my first wrap and turn, wrap and turn, come back on the purl side, going a couple of stitches beyond that wrap and turn, wrap and turn and come back. So I did two sets, let's say, because you're working each side, right? The, the, the right side and then the wrong side. So two sets of wrap and turn. Well, no, I guess it's German short rows. I shouldn't say wrap and turn. German short rows. So I hope that works out and we will find out and you guys will find out once I complete this garment. And I am doing kind of gangbusters on it. Uh, uh, when I was at the Christy Glass and Gregory Stitch um, flash mob, I saw Stephanie. She had a trunk show at Nitty City. And so I bought some yarn and I fell in love with this color. It is a bulky weight yarn. I forgot what she calls it. Um, it's probably on my Ravelry page. And I think this is called Bad Girl, this color. So I made this headband. No pattern. I just, I did a seed stitch. Well, I do an edge stitch, which I always slip as if to purl with the yarn in back. Wait, slip as if to purl. No, I think with the yarn in front. I think I slip as if to purl. My edge stitches... I always slip as if to purl with the yarn in front, then I move my yarn to the back and then do whatever I'm supposed to do. On this one I decided a simple seed stitch, I think there's four stitches, then an eight stitch cable, and then another four stitches of seed stitch, and then my edge stitch. And my last stitch I always knit, so that when I turn my needles around, I'm going to slip as if to purl with the yarn in front, and then move my, needle, my, uh, my yarn into position for whatever the rest of the pattern is. But I just love this color. It is a lovely blue, a blue pink. So it's a cool pink, which for me, as you guys know, I talk about it all the time at nauseum. You're probably tired of hearing me talk about it. But um, I'm very much into wearing the, sh the, I don't know, is it called the tone of a hue of a color? The, the tone, I get whatever it's under, coloring is. So I need blue uh, based colors. So it, you know, um, which you can find is cool and warm colors for every color, right? So there's cool and warm of a color in almost every single hue of the rainbow. So let me show you guys this. I'm going to be careful not to knock down my lizard here. So this that is my headband and I just love it. It's so great. Um, 
And what I do for the fit, since I knit it, I use straight needles because, you know, there's so few stitches. And so I just knit, 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 knit. And as I'm going along, pretend this is just, as I knit before, you know, I don't do it in the round. Uh, I knit and I stretch the band around my head until, and I, you know, I pull on the yarn because it needs to have some give. Um, and then I see if I've got maybe a half an inch, then I figure, okay, I can bind off and then sew up the seam and then I will be, uh, the fit will be perfect. So I really, I love this. It's actually been chilly here in Los Angeles. I wore this out when I did my walk the other late afternoon because it was quite chilly and windy. I have a mirror to my, to my left, I guess you're right. Um, so I, re I really love this. I love this color. And I'm thinking I would love to make a big bulky sweater in this color. So I may buy some more of this from Stephanie at Asylum Fibers. Thank you, Stephanie, for this. I love, love, love this color, Stephanie. Please don't get rid of it. Great, great pink. Super fabulous pink for all of us cool, complected uh, skin tones. And, <clears throat> oh, actually, on someone's Instagram feed, I saw... They're making a headband. I think I've seen this a couple times. It is the English Fisherman's Rib or English Rib headband. Actually, hold on. Fisherman's Rib or English Rib. I'll insert in here uh, the pattern name. And uh, so, oh, so just to show you so what I do when I'm knitting now of course this isn't long enough for me to do this but I will I will pull and then I will keep doing this right so I'll, go, I'll start in the back and keep pulling it so as I knit once it's long enough right and it'll come and that's how I measure for my own head so you leave maybe a half an inch three quarters of an inch um, to make sure the fit but you do have to you know it depends on the yarn too right some yarns are a little stretchier than others and however you're going to seam up, that may make a difference. So maybe you want a half an inch or a little bit less than a half an inch to sew up your seam. And that is that. That's it, guys. Wishing all of you a very happy new year. And I will see you in the new year in 2020. Can you believe it? 2020. And then VKL. Oh, my gosh, you guys. I got my in the mail. Dee, 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 dee. VKL. I got my little uh, pass here, so I'm very happy about that. Gets me excited. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe, and I will see you in the new year. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye.